Hey guys, it's Miss Smith. I'm back here uh, on our YouTube classroom for Unit 5, Week 5 in your Wonders book. So we will still be using this book today. And our story is on page 56 and looks like this. So this is Week 5 of our MTI um, virtual learning from home. So yesterday we learned the definitions of our vocabulary words. Hopefully you've had a chance to watch that video and the video um, that I posted about non-native species because that will help you to understand what those are a little bit for our story today. So let's quickly go ahead and review our definitions for vocabulary words so they can help us understand today's story. The first word is ban, which means uh, you don't allow something to happen. The next word is benefit, and benefit means to help. Overwhelm uh, means if there are too many in an area, nuisance, something that is annoying, originated means where something began or started from, and infected means sick or diseased. All right, so we'll hear some of the words in our story today. Um, this is if you look, it says a persuasive article. Now, a persuasive article is a nonfiction, so it is going to give us information. It is going to teach us as readers facts about a topic. And the topic for the story um, is about non native species. However, that word persuasive is very important because sometimes the author's purpose for writing information to us is to persuade us to think the same way they think. So if someone's trying to persuade you, they do give you lots of facts and lots of true information, but they're doing it in a way where they are giving you reasons and trying to convince you to come to their side and come to their ways of thinking. So for example, um, you might think that having pizza every Friday in the cafeteria is the best thing ever. However, there might be a lot of people that um, pizza is not their favorite food. They may say, well, I would rather have um, chicken every Friday. So people who like pizza are going to give facts about pizza. They're going to say, oh, it has all of the food groups, so it's healthy for you. There's the grain and the crust, there's vegetables in the tomato sauce, there's uh, dairy in the cheese, there's meat on the top if you have pepperoni or sausage. It's so healthy and it's delicious. So yes, those things are true about pizza, that it has all the food groups, but those people are also trying to get you to believe the same thing. The people who like chicken may say, oh wow, if, uh, but chicken is healthier for you and um, if you eat it with some vegetables every Friday, uh, your body will feel better and you'll have more energy. And um, So they're going to give facts too, but they're going to give reasons to make you believe the same things they do. So even though both sides might be giving facts, they still want to pull you in their direction. So that is the purpose of reading the story today. You're going to hear two different sides. You're going to hear someone who wrote facts about non-native species and some good things that they really have done. We're also gonna hear from someone who wrote about non-native species and some of the bad things 
that really have happened. So at the end, you're going to have to decide which person persuaded you the most. That means which side convinced you that you're going to believe them instead of the other side, okay? Sometimes um, classrooms do that. The teacher might give a topic, like I just talked about school lunch, and there are two different sides or two teams, and students will debate, which means they give facts and they give reasons that you should want to think the same way they do. So it is very good practice for uh, listening in English and saying things that you feel in English. And so I'm kind of a little sad that we're not at school together as um, our big group in my room to where we could debate about this topic. But we will talk about it in our Zoom meeting later this week in our small groups. So let's get started with it today. You can read along in your book if you want. Um, if you look at this picture, this is a real photograph. So like we said, nonfiction usually has real photographs taken by real cameras, and that's a clue that it's nonfiction. The caption, this is the words under the picture that give you more information to help you understand what's happening in this picture. Because if I just looked at oranges, I might say, ooh, looks good, I'm hungry. But I don't know why they included this in the article until I read the caption. It says, oranges and chickens are examples of non-native species. That means they did not originate here. They didn't start here. They came from somewhere else. Now, I know orange trees don't have legs, so they couldn't have just walked over here. So we're going to have to see how did they get here. So the title of this article is, Should Plants and Animals from Other Places Live Here? So I'd like you to ask yourself that question now, before we read it. Do you think plants and animals from other places, like from other countries, should come to live in our country? Should those animals grow here? Should we um, plant those plants here? Just think in your head. You don't have to say it out loud. Think in your head, what do you feel right now? Okay. The first part is called New Arrivals Welcome. It says non-native species are good for business and they taste good too. So it sounds like from that little clue, the person writing on this page likes non-native species. So they're going to give us facts and try to persuade us to also like non-native species. Some of America's most important imports are plants and animals that come from other regions or countries. They are called non-native species. So that blue word imports, um, it means that it comes from somewhere else. Um, so I have a car <laughs> that was not made in the United States. It was an import. It came from another country. And so it was made somewhere else and brought here. Um, there are many, many things that are made or food that is grown in other countries that other countries will sell to America and they bring it over. So that's called an import. And so when plants and animals come from other countries, those are called non-native species. So, if the chicken was born in America, if it was made here, or started here, it would be a native species. But if it wasn't started here, it's non-native. So we, in America, we do use a lot of non-native species of plants and animals that are imported from other places. It says non-native species are invasive when they harm the environment, our health, or the economy. Invasive species can take over an area and cause native wildlife to decline. Yet, 
we would be a lot worse off without some of them. Hmm. So in this part, <laughs> the author kind of tells us some bad things that non-native species do. And I thought up here they were going to tell us good things. So what they said was that invasive species, that means when a non-native species comes and it kind of takes over a place, if it overwhelms, that means there gets to be too many. Sometimes that is bad for the environment um, or our health or the economy. And so we are going to hear some examples of that. Um, for example, I know that there are some bugs that are non-native to United States uh, that came from other countries. And in the other countries, they were fine. But here, those bugs eat a lot of the plants that were native to our country. So sometimes, um, plants or animals or bugs can be, um, they can damage other things that are in our environment. So those bugs eat all the, the plants that we need. Um, sometimes it's health. Sometimes animals or plants, if they are diseased, <laughs> if they are infected, they can make us sick. Kind of like the coronavirus, how they say it started in animals. Um, if that's true, if there was an animal that was sick and infected humans, now it has overwhelmed us. It has taken over. There's too much of it. So um, non-native species can also um, damage people's health. And the economy, that means businesses. So for example, if you are an apple tree farmer and some weird bug from another country is brought over and starts eating all of the apples on your trees, you won't have any apples to sell. And so you're not going to make any money. And that's what the economy is. It's businesses working together um, to keep money going in the country. And so when businesses are doing bad, the economy isn't good for country. So you can see there's a lot of bad things that can happen from non-native species coming. But let's read on because this author, uh, even though mentions some bad things, overall they think it's worth it because the good outweighs the bad. So let's see if you agree. For example, in Florida, about 2,000 species of familiar plants and animals are non-native. Oranges, chickens, and sugarcane are non-native. In fact, about 90% of farm sales are non-native species. Wow. So if someone a long time ago had not brought orange trees or chickens or sugarcane to the United States, we wouldn't be growing those things here now. We would have to pay other countries to make those or grow those for us and import them over. So it's kind of crazy to think that we wouldn't just have those things here now because they've been here for so long. But they weren't always here. They had to originate from somewhere else and people brought them. Some scientists bring in non-native species to help control insects and pests that harm crops. For example, Scientists brought Vidalia beetles from Australia to eat insects that killed citrus fruit. The Vidalia beetles completed their mission without any side effects. They benefit citrus farmers. Wow, so citrus farmers are those who grow orange trees or lemon trees. Um, they have like the very juicy fruit with the skin you have to peel off. So there were a kind of a bug or insect that was eating those trees. And so they brought in a different kind of bug that was bigger, a beetle, to come live on the trees. And the big beetle ate the little bugs that were hurting the oranges. But the big bugs don't hurt the oranges. They only eat those little bugs. 
that were hurting the oranges, if that makes sense. So that means the little bugs are gone now and the oranges are safe and can grow. So sometimes using a little bit of science can help things and that's what they meant by benefit. The farmers get the benefit from those beetles being brought over. Many dogs and cats we love come from other countries. Would you want to ban Labrador retrievers or Siamese cats? Creatures like these make our lives and our nation better. So, even some of our pets were not always in the United States. They were brought from other countries. So they're non-native to United States, but it's hard to imagine not having them here now. And that's what they're asking. Can you imagine banning them? Can you imagine if we did not allow those animals to come? So those are some things to think about. They're saying that some of our um, food that we eat here um, is safe for now because they did bring in a special kind of bug to take care of a problem. And we have pets. So food can be better. Our lives are better if you have a pet, maybe. So the author gives some good facts and reasons to agree that non-native species are often a good thing. However, the next page says a growing problem. So I'm guessing the author for this side doesn't agree with the author on this side. Let's see what they have to say. It says a growing problem. Thousands of foreign species threaten our country. Threaten is a word that means uh, they could bring harm to our country. So this definitely isn't sounding good for non-native species. Visitors to the Florida Everglades expect to see alligators. However, over 150,000 pythons from Southeast Asia live there. They probably ended up there because pet owners dumped them there. Now the pythons are a threat to the endangered native species. Hmm. So Florida has a very hot weather all year long. Um, it does rain a lot. And so in the southern part, the bottom part of the state, um, is an area called the Everglades. And so there's lots of uh, wa water and grass that's hot and it's just the perfect place for alligators to live. It's exactly the kind of habitat they need. And they've lived there for a long time. But people started getting um, pythons as pets from Southeast Asia and sometimes pythons can become very big. They're not really good pets to have if you don't have the room to take care of them. And so somebody <laughs> had this big python that was imported from Southeast Asia and instead of taking care of it in their home, they dumped it out into the water in Florida. And this is also a good habitat for pythons because they like to be where it is hot and wet a lot. So they like the same kind of habitat as the alligators. And now it's a problem because they are a threat. That means they can harm the native species. The animals that were already here can be in danger because of these pythons. Some non-native species are harmful when they become invasive. Each year, the United States spends $137 billion to repair damage non-native spe species cause. For example, the Asian carp invaded the Great Lakes. Now it threatens the ecosystem. Asian carp have big appetites so the population of native fish has declined. Oh, 
So, yikes. Now they're talking about um, an Asian carp is a kind of fish and it was brought from another country to here and now they are living in the United States in our Great Lakes and those fish are eating up all of the native fish, the fish that were already here. And so now they're in danger and there's not many left. Kind of like how the pythons are hurting the alligators. There's not as many alligators left and there's way more pythons. So that's what invasive means. It uh, means kind of when it comes and it takes over everything and what used to be here, uh, there's not much left of it anymore. Uh, kind of like this, they come and overwhelm the habitats. Some germs are also invasive species. They are very harmful to humans. One germ the avian influenza virus came to the United States carried by birds. This microbe can cause a serious lung disorder. Wow. So yeah, it's not even just plants and animals. Sometimes it can be um, diseases that infect other people. But those diseases are often carried through um, animals that maybe shouldn't have come here. So we had some birds that were infected that came here and then they made people sick, which now as they're studying the coronavirus more think maybe that's something similar. Maybe another animal that was infected has carried it to people. And we know that that is a serious illness now too, but they didn't know about that when they um, printed this story. <laughs> but now we understand what invasive means. Invasive means to invade. It means to come and take over and to harm and to hurt. Sometimes people introduce a non-native species to improve the environment. So here the author is kind of talking about that. Improve means to make better. And we know this author talked about how using the beetles to eat the little bugs that were hurting the oranges, that helped the environment. And that's what they're saying, that sometimes people do have to do that to solve a problem. However, this creates unexpected problems. So that means even if it makes things better for a while, mm, something bad could happen after that. A hundred years ago, <laughs> Melaleuca trees came from Australia to Florida to stabilize swampy areas. Now, millions of trees crowd out native species. So in the beginning, they brought these trees from Australia because the ground um, was very swampy. That means it was very, it was always full of water, and squishy if you walked on it, kind of like mud. And it wasn't a good place to build things because the ground was soft and squishy. It wasn't hard and stable. But if you bring in trees and their roots start to grow under the ground and they soak up a lot of that water, it makes the ground more stable. So they thought they were doing a good thing when they brought these trees and it was good for a while. But now these trees have taken over <laughs> and overwhelmed the area and now Native plants, other trees and plants that used to grow there uh, don't really have room to grow because these other trees have invaded, they've taken over. The facts about alien invasion lead to one conclusion. We must remove invasive species and stop new ones from entering. Wow, so this person has a very strong conclusion. They tell you exactly how they feel. They don't think we should let anything else come into our country. No other plants or animals should come because even if we think it's solving a problem, we don't know that many years from now it might create another problem. Um, I do love a good informational text, you know, because there's usually a chart or graph that goes along with it to help us understand more. 
So on the last page, it says non-native species, benefits and costs. About 50,000 non-native species live in the United States. These four examples show the positive and negative impacts they can have. So you can see the species are the plants and animals. The native land is where they came from, where they originated. Um, when and how introduced to U.S. So that means when did they get brought over or imported and who, how did they get here? Who brought them? Positive impact means what's something good that's happened since they came. And negative impact means what's something bad that's happened since they came. So if you look at the first species, it's an animal, a horse. It's really from Europe. It was brought to the U.S. in the early 1500s on purpose. Um, that means that the people wanted to bring them here uh, maybe for farming, uh, to travel, because obviously there weren't cars then, so people could ride them. Um, so lots of good reasons, right? So that's what it says, a positive impact. They were used for work, transportation, and recreation. So people did use them on the farm to help with work. Transportation means they use them to ride on. Uh, recreation, um, lots of people like to train horses or um, make them do tricks and they can train them to do a lot. So it's for fun too. But negative, it says it made large wars possible. So a long time ago when our country was still new and we didn't have things like cars and um, tanks and trucks. The, they used horses um, for wars, and they would put soldiers on the horses, um, especially in the Civil War in our country. So lots of people died because of war and lots of horses. So that's kind of sad because we had so many, we were able um, to use them in war. Okay, another species is kudzu, and that is a plant. It is from Asia. It was brought in the early 1800s on purpose because it stops soil erosion. Kind of like what I was telling you about the swamp. Um, erosion means that over time it wears away because of wind or rain. And so the kudzu kind of kept the soil in place so it didn't get washed away. But the negative part is it crowds out native plants. So now if you wanted to plant a flower garden where there's a lot of kudzu, uh, they couldn't grow. The kudzu will always take over. So it did solve one problem, but it caused another problem. The next species is olives. They came from the Middle East and Europe in the early 1700s on purpose Cultivation began in 1800s. So people brought them over and started planting um, them. And then by the 1800s, there were a lot here that they could pick themselves. Some good things are it's a major food and cooking oil source, important industry in California. So California is one of our largest states in the United States. So because they're able to grow these and grow so many of them, um, it really makes a lot of money for that state, so that's a good thing. But a negative thing is most olives must be imported because they do not grow everywhere. So California has the right kind of weather, but not our whole country. So we still have to have a lot of them um, bought and brought to us from other countries. And the last one, the Mediterranean fruit fly, came from sub-Saharan Africa in 1920, 1929, and it says accidentally. So that means they did not, <laughs> nobody brought these uh, fruit flies here on purpose. So maybe they um, were on a piece of fruit from Africa and someone traveled here and that fly 
was able to fly around in the United States and, and ha make more. So, yeah, they didn't do it for a reason like these other plants and animals. It was an accident. A good thing is it may be a food source for creatures such as spiders. So we do have some uh, good insects and creatures in the United States that are good. Um, now some spiders are poisonous, but very few. Most of them are good because they eat bugs that are bad for us. <laughs> um, and that's what they're saying, that spiders and other bugs that we need can eat this fruit fly. So it's good for them because they have plenty to eat. But the bad thing is, these fruit flies destroy 400 species of plants, including citrus and vegetable crops. So we really don't need these fruit flies here because they eat uh, plants that have fruit and vegetables that farmers intentionally plant because they want to grow a lot of food so that they can sell it and make money and also good for us because our country needs to be able to provide enough food for everyone so we can go to the grocery store and buy it. And if these flies eat it all, then the farmers don't have any to sell, so no money to farmers and no food for us when we go to the grocery store. So this chart kind of really lays out um, a lot of good information and it gives you something to think about. Um, so now that we've finished, I know that was a lot, but this is a really good article. I want you to think back to the moment at the beginning when I said, um, should plants and animals from other places live here? And I told you to think in your head, how do you feel about that? Do you think they should come here or not? Now I want you to think again in your head and ask yourself that same question. Hmm, should plants and animals from other places come to live here? And I just want you to think, has your mind changed since the beginning of our story? Do you feel differently now that you've heard both sides? Hmm. Well, I hope that you'll, you will share that with us in our Zoom meeting this week because I'll be interested to hear. There's no right or wrong answer. That's the point of a persuasive article, is to get you thinking and to um, challenge you to think about which side are you really on. And you have to be able to give your reasons why you think that. So I think the authors in this article did a good job of that. And I'm just interested to see um, which one was more convincing for you. So now that we've done vocabulary, I hope you've watched the video about um, non-native species. Now we've got to read the story. Um, so it'll be uh, up to you to read the story on your own and underline where you find the answers to the questions I put in our checklist. It is optional. You do not have to do the vocabulary page or answer questions on the sides of the pages, but you can if you want to. Uh, we will be talking about uh, the words in our story at our Zoom meeting later this week. So I hope you guys are all having a good week. Remember, if you have any questions or need help, just send me a dojo message or email. And I look forward to seeing you guys really soon. Talk to you soon. I'm happy to help you if you need anything, okay? Bye-bye. <laughs>